The majority of people living with HIV are not transmitting HIV sexually to their partners. The only way to fight stigma and shame is to shine light on it. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Welcome to a very special edition of Plus Talk on Plus Life. Breaking news over the weekend from the World Health Organization. Breaking exciting news and joining me to tell me all about it is Dr. Lara Voinov. She's the Diagnostics Advisor for Global HIV, Hepatitis and STI Program at World Health Organization. That is one very long business card that you need to get all of that. <laughs> Good to see you, Doc. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. This is exciting stuff. Uh, tell us you're the author of this report. What is the World Health Organization saying about undetectable now? So we have a couple of key messages. I think the biggest one that you've heard over this week and over the conference is that we, and based on evidence that came out a couple of days ago from The Lancet, is that people living with HIV who have an undetectable viral load have zero risk of transmitting HIV to their sexual partners. I think another key piece is not just for those who are undetectable, but who have a suppressed viral load. So that means they have some viral load, it's detected, but it's less than 1,000 copies per ml. And we now state that people living with HIV who have a suppressed viral load have almost zero risk or negligible risk of transmitting HIV to their sexual partners. Now, so just to be clear, because I think a lot of us um, in the activism space anyway, those of us living with HIV, we have been saying zero risk f for, you know, the last few years. But this is a big step because I noticed that in a lot of official language that we often see, whether it's put out by CDC or other organizations, we might see effectively zero risk or almost zero risk when it comes to identifying undetectable. So this is a big shift because you guys are removing that effectively or that almost in reference to undetectable. That's a game changer, isn't it? I think so. And that's what we've heard from the community. We, even in our own documents and our guidelines, and of course, some of our guidelines can be quite long, have said there's no evidence. But that doesn't seem to translate particularly well across the entire HIV programmatic, programmatic spectrum. And so I think what we're trying to do with this policy brief is make sure that it could be understood by anyone within the response, from the general public, ideally, people living with HIV, um, and policymakers, researchers, et cetera. So no one can misinterpret, ideally, this message anymore. Why did the report come about now? What, was, what prompted you to, to put this together for this time? We started to hear from countries, from partners and stakeholders that the current treatment monitoring algorithm, while most of them were being taken up, it wasn't allowing for expanded access to viral load testing. Not all people living with HIV, even in developed settings, are getting viral load tested. And part of this issue is this focus and prioritization of only using plasma-based technologies and, and samples in order to give, provide viral load testing. And so with this, we wanted to really highlight that there are a lot of other options out there to be able to provide viral load testing, like dried blood spots, point of care technologies that can still do what you want programmatically, identifying whether you have an undetectable viral load, as well as for the individual health. And so with all of that together and really understanding the potential impact of this kind of message for the community, we felt that now was really the, the necessary time to put this out. Yeah, because often, and I've had this in my own experience, I will go in for my regular checkups or anything, and, I, and we might do a CD4 check, and I go, but you know, can we, where, where are we at with the viral load? Oh, look, we don't need to run that this time. It's, too exp it's a very expensive test and all of that. This helps kind of mitigate that worry about cost, especially for point of care providers, right? I think so. The costs are really coming down. And although countries are really trying to scale up viral load, now it provides the opportunity for people living with HIV to come up and say, I want this test. I want this test to be able to tell my family, to tell my friends this positive news and to be able to live a light, you know, a normal, healthy life, both for their own health as well as their own sexual life. Well, and we know ultimately that becomes a win-win for everybody, not just for the person living with HIV, but the partner and really society on a whole 
when we're not, you know, burdened with extra financial costs. Um, we talk about this report as also moving the needle um, and helping us towards health equity. How so? I think for us, it's one of the things we really reflected on was the ongoing challenges that people living with HIV face around stigma, discrimination, and criminalization. And we, I worked very closely with one of my colleagues, Andy Seal, on this work. And one thing we continually spoke about was the consistent criminalization of people living with HIV. And we wanted to try to switch the discussion a little bit and, and make it clear that the majority of people living with HIV are not transmitting HIV sexually to their partners. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the key additional figures that we included here as an effort to help decriminalization of people living with HIV and to help the general public understand that, again, you know, the majority, anywhere from 68 to 75 percent people living with HIV have an undetectable viral load or a suppressed viral load and, again, have no risk or zero risk of trans sexually transmitting HIV to their partners. And your report also really does show that very clear and concise messaging, such as using language like zero risk, um, encourages people, supports people. Once people have clear messaging like that, they are more willing to go and get tested and, and talk about prevention as treatment and things like that too, right? Exactly. And I think there are probably a lot of people out there who don't have access to viral load and don't know that they are undetect have an undetectable viral load and have zero risk of transmission. And so imagine you know, the doubts and the concerns that they're, they continue to have when ideally they'd go now and say, I want this test. I want to know where I'm at so I can live a very different life. Yeah, and I mentioned, I, I mentioned PrEP there for a second. How do the findings of a, of a report like this help support getting things like PrEP, prevention and treatment, out into the, in, so that everyone has access, not just gay white men in America? Yeah, ideally, this is something that policymakers, governments, et cetera, really think about, particularly being empowered to know that the people who are transmitting HIV are those who are undiagnosed, or those who are diagnosed but not yet on treatment. And so now, of course, PrEP continues to be important and should be an important pillar of our response. But we also now need to focus on making sure we identify all people living with HIV and putting them onto optimal treatment to then prevent ongoing transmissions. Well, Dr. Laura Voynov of the World Health Organization, thanks for making the time. Thanks for getting up early there in Australia uh, and for this report. It, it really is a game changer and we are, we are happy and proud to say zero. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you. I appreciate it. That's going to do it for this special edition of Plus Talk. If you want more information, check out the website, pluslifemedia.com. Remember, you can follow us across social media platforms. We are at Plus Life Media. Until next time, remember, say zero. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.